All right, so here is the Yeti 1500X. This is your 12 volt extension cord. Um, this one can be routed in to run the TV. You don't have to have this one. This one alone can reach to the TV. Um, this one's just plugged in here. So in order for any of these things to work, you have to have like that button on. Um, and then it's important to shut that button off. This is for your AC power there. Um, so this is where you'll hook in your shore power. The shore power, meaning the RV big extension cord, it's under the battery box. You just run that over and plug it into here. And then you turn on this button here. You always want to make sure when you're done using it, you always turn that off because this will use about six to nine watts and then it'll drain the battery down. Um, here's your light switch to turn off and on to see the units. Um, you have your um, output, 605 watt hours. You have 12.2 volts there. There we go, now you can see it. Um, so that's basically when you have the solar panel hooked up, you'll see the input coming in. And this is your input here. Um, you don't have to worry about these outputs. All these are wired and ready to go. Um, in order for these to be active, you have to have that USB button on. That button really doesn't use any power. Um, it's just nice to know that you can just turn that off. So right now, it's not using any power with the USB button on. Um, but it's just important to always shut these off. When you do turn on the AC, this is using a DC to AC, it's using power and it's using 0.7 amps and it's using 9 watts just for this inverter that's built into the Yeti. Um, so it's important to always make sure that's off and then you can turn that off. Um, your shore power connection is right in here. So basically, let me get on a camera here. There we go. So you just take off one of these little covers, little little plastic child lock covers um, for the outlet, and then you just plug in your shore power right there. So what I mean by shore power is, um, let me put it on pause. So you take your shore power cord, you have your shore power 30 amp to 15 amp most RVA parks you're going to be plugging in with this 30 amp but here you just plug it in take off that little guy there and then you just plug in just like that and then the extension cord is just in the battery box here and um, you just run that extension cord and then you plug it in. You don't want to turn the AC button off first. You want to go inside. And you always want to have this main power disconnect switch on when you plug in to shore power or into the Yeti. I'm leaving this light on so this will let you know if your power is on or off. Rock your switch back to the right. That disconnects the main brand new blue Optima battery that we got for the rear for the house. That one controls all the 12 volt inputs. And so right now it's completely disconnected. Nothing's gonna drain. That battery's perfect. Turn it back on light comes on. Turn it off, light turns off. <laughs> so when you're driving, you don't actually have to have this switch on while you're driving. While you're driving, it will charge automatically the house battery every time you charge. Doesn't matter if the switch is off or on, it's always gonna charge. So would you guys go for a drive? Don't worry about it. Just go for a drive like you normally would. And it's going to charge the main house battery 
but it's underneath the carpet in the back. Okay, here we are back at the panel. Turn it on. Sorry, that was off. Turn it on this way. This is your water pump. This is your test switch. So you have two thirds full on your propane. Oh, sorry, this one doesn't have a propane gauge. This is fresh water. Mine has a propane gauge. This is holding. And this is your gray. This is your toilet. And this is like your shower, sink water. And your battery, whenever it's in the G, it means it's good. When it's at the C, it just means it's fully charged. Once you start turning on the inverter, like it is now, the inverter, inverter, it's that one down there. Um, it, it'll just draw power. So you just simply turn it off. And then going to the radio, um, I don't have the radio automatically set to open and close every time you turn on the car. Um, it's quite a lot just for it to motorize back and forth every time. So when you guys aren't driving it, so we park for a long time, people don't really need to know, you know, that this one's here. So you could just hit this open and close button. 